thing that's not excellent is this coaching. And Mac Jones is once again blowing up on the sidelines and on the field. And I can't get a, a feel for um, sort of what what the media and what fans think of it. Um, but I love it. And it reminds me way too much of Tom Brady that I have to talk about it. Yeah. And you hate comparing him to Brady and I get it. And he's not, he's not even close. He's, you know, he's a 500 quarterback, whatever you are, a little over 500, blah, blah, blah. But it's clear that he's fed up. And to me, every single week, this team plays that it is not Mac Jones fault that this team is where they are. And this offense is where they are because he goes out there and he makes these plays the the throw on the sideline and you know just there, there's so many you, you can pick them apart you can look them at uh, look at them in, on film but the epitome of like the coaching staff and this offense was despite them coming out with a double score the end of the first half and then the beginning of the second half because the end of the first half they have two timeouts left 10 seconds left on like the 35 yard line and they run the football I mean, what are we doing? Like, seriously, that and, is and like... And run it out of the shotgun. Right. It's, what are we well, doing? Sorry, sorry, let me backtrack real quick. They get the ball with like 2.13 left and barely right. get to the two-minute warning before a punting defense saves them to get another shot. Right. This That's where, where the double score... Yeah. It, yeah, and then you pick it up again and you have a shot and you get in, in scoring range. 35 or 10 seconds left on the 35 going in. Two timeouts and you run the football and you just try and play for a field goal. Like, you have two timeouts. Try and make a play. You have a quarterback who's playing pretty well for the circumstances around him, and you just, you essentially, you're not punting, but you're just playing so conservatively. And it's like, it makes no sense. Why are you not trying to score a touchdown? They're so incapable of calling an offense. And it's not even, it's Matt Patricia's fault, but it's not Matt Patricia's fault. It's Bill Belichick's fault because he's putting them in these situations. There's this talk, and there's this talk about the hot seat. And I wrote about it last night, and I, it's you know it could be prisoner of the moment, but it feels like there's something there to this whole. Could they do something with Bill Belichick if something doesn't change? Because the buck stops with him, and something has to change on this offense. Because, like you said, Grow's been great. The offense or the defense is in a good spot. They have talent. Something has to change on this offense, and it has to happen sooner rather than later. Because you're going to either lose Max confidence, you're going to lose him as a player, or you're going to just continue losing football games. Yeah. I, so as it comes to Belichick's job security, I just guessing, right. Mm -hmm. I would think he'd be given an opportunity where it's like, Hey, you're a defensive guy, right? Matt's a defensive guy. There needs to be a real offensive mind in charge of the, like if like Matt's not going to be here, right. Matt right. Or, or Matt's, I could see, I could see a world honestly where he's still employed by the team, but they kick him back upstairs. He's just that senior football advisor, whatever. Right? That's, that's going like, to happen. Sorry to cut you off. There's, he's not going to be not on this staff anymore. Right. He'll be, but he'll I, be somewhere in the building. I could also see a situation where, where they, they being the team, the crafts go to him and say, Matt's not in charge of the offense anymore. Like, right. You can stay, you like, you can either find somebody else or we can find somebody else. Right. Like, I think that would be, and I can't imagine Bill Belichick would walk away like no, Matt Patricia being his offense coordinator would be the hill he'd die on. As for the Mac Jones stuff, I'm team Mac. I get, and I think he's more frustrated with the situation. Like people are trying to make this like personal about Patricia. No, I right. get, I, I, I don't think he's going to like go egg Patricia's house or anything. Right. I think he's frustrated with the situation. Well, there was a video, there was a video of them on the sideline talking it over after and laughing. Yeah. And they hugged and, and whatever. Hugged like so Max an emotional guy. First of all, I don't it's know why we're all, it's an emotional game. I don't know why we're all like so aghast at this when the exact same thing happened last week. And by the way, it wasn't right. just Mac Jones. It was Mac Jones, Kendrick Bourne, and Neil Snagler. So right. I don't get that. I get why we're talking about it. It's good content. I don't get why people are acting so surprised about it. We just saw the same thing happen. It's right. two weeks in a row. Yeah. But I'm Team Mac. I, I'm I'm all for him being frustrated with the situation. It's a frustrating situation. He's clearly not the only player frustrated with it, as we heard last week from Bourne and Aguilar. And you know, you want your leader to be on the same page with the rest of the locker room. And by the way, I love a quarterback that shows emotion and wears right. his emotion on his sleeve, positively or negatively. You know who else did that? The last guy, Tom. Well, yeah. the two guys go, but also the last guy. Honestly, Cam right. Newton played very emotionally, and I loved that. Yeah, Cam Newton did too. Yeah. For all his warts, it made him very fun to watch. And you know what? If Mac was just walking off the field emotionless, you know what all these people would be saying today? 
Well, he doesn't care. Oh, he doesn't care. Oh, you right. think he'd be upset about not moving the ball? <laughs> no. Like, I want my quarterback still in motion. I am, you can quote me on that. I am on the record on that. I love that yeah. he cares this much. I sat here, whatever it was, three weeks ago and reamed out Zach Wilson for not giving a shit. Yep. I stand by that 100%. I loved it, Max fired up. I hope when they have success, he's as emotional in a positive sense as he's been the last two weeks when things aren't going well. That's what I want my quarterback to be. That's what I want my leader to be, right? Like, it's just, I I think it's such a good trait that he cares as much. Nobody ever told Tom Brady to, to tune it down. And fine, Tom Brady's too above and beyond. You shouldn't compare him, you know, to, right. to Tom Brady. There's other quarterbacks, like great quarterbacks, who showing emotion is a big part of what they do. Like, just, you know, Philip Rivers is the first one that comes to mind. And people, oh, he didn't win a Super Bowl. He was a good player, right? Mm -hmm. And Philip Rivers played with a ton of emotion. I'm, I'm I'm trying to think, you know, off the top of my head right now, Russell Wilson. Cam Newton's the good example. Cam Newton was an MVP in this league, and he played really good, solid quarterback play. And his his whole thing is his moxie and his attitude and his care for the game. It's like that's a thing you have to be that confident, right? You have to be that confident. And I mean, you know. Stafford's another guy who plays with a ton of emotion. You saw him uh, last week uh, or, or last year win a Super Bowl, right. right? Drew Brees was another guy who played very emotionally. Ben Roethlisberger was another guy who played very emotionally. You know who's somebody who doesn't play with a lot of emotion, by the way? And I didn't even think I was going to go down this road, but I'll use it while I have it. Jimmy Garoppolo, oh, a God. stone-faced <laughs> quarterback. Just walking off the field. That's the guy that doesn't care. Nah, you're no, you're reaching. Jimmy, Jimmy plays with some with some swagger. He's mm. he's a guy. He, he laughs and he's yeah. Uh, I, I don't I've never seen like him get that. mad like that. He'll that's play with emotion he when they're winning. Mad. Yes, that's a good point. I've that's never seen point. him get mad. Like he didn't get mad. He quit. Remember, he tried holding out. He tried leaving because it wasn't going his way. Conversation for another day. It is. I did again, I didn't <laughs> intend to go that way. But like No, I know. <laughs> I'm all, I want my quarterback to play with emotion. I do. Right. And, and Mac does it, and it's great. I, I would not tell him to change it. I wouldn't. If that's the way he plays, if that's what's going to fuel him, let it fuel him. I'm with you. And it's, again, it's you, people think it's a bad thing, and it's really – I mean, again, if he's if he's cussing out players and, like, flipping out, like – and it's, like, negatively impacting the game, then that's one thing. But it hasn't, and it it shouldn't because, again, it's not – it's, no, it's, he's not. It's, he's not chewing out his wide receivers or anything like right. that. He's different. getting right. Exactly. He's not talking down on anyone. He's like, right. He's pissed off and he wants this thing to freaking work, and it hasn't. And it's come to a point. Um, last thing here is just, uh, I mean, the offensive line. Uh, they only let up one sack, but Mac, there was pressure ah, on his face all game. That's misleading. And, yeah, oh, so misleading. There was pressure all over him. I'm just if anything, that's this- a, that's another feather in Mac's cap that there was only right. one stack in that game. Good for Mac. Seriously, he was getting away. There was one play where um, it was Orlovsky broke it down. I go to him like the Bible uh, on some of He's these been film great. breakdowns, yeah. and uh, it was it was a simple five man protection. Five guys. They were not doing any sort of like clouding or you know um, what what did the Patriots call it when they would just have like the amoeba? There was no amoeba yeah. in this play. It was five down linemen, two linebackers behind them, uh, and they just – they rushed five, and the offensive line, five on five, had no idea what to do. Connor McDermott doubles down for no reason when uh, David Andrews down blocks and McDermott down blocks on the same guy, and then Isaiah Simmons comes free, and Mack gets away with it. So that's not a sack, but Mack gets away and throws the football away, but it's like – if you can't even scheme up the base, a uh, basic, you know, five man front with two backers on five on five, no free rushers. It's not like it was a blitz and you're throwing off the backer. It was, they just couldn't block five on five, and it, it's bad. It's really bad, and it's, it's not going to get better this season. And it's, it like you said, it has to be the quick fix for next season if you don't want to lose Mac and his confidence anymore. Yeah, and it, it's really interesting. I actually talked to Ross Tucker when I was at the Army Navy game. Uh, he and he played for the Patriots in 2005 as an offensive lineman when. Matt Patricia was the assistant offensive line coach. He's one of the few players outside of those on this team who were coached by Matt Patricia offensively. And I, I you know, I asked him about what Patricia was like. He's always oh, he's great. Tucker actually worked very closely with him because he came in during the season and Patricia was the one who got him caught up to speed. Well, Scar was working with the team, getting ready for the week and all that. And he said, 
yeah, just it feels like a big jump. This is Tucker talking about yep. Patricia. It feels like a big jump for a guy who's never called offensive plays to go right to it. He said he probably could have been the offensive line coach. He probably could have been, you know, even, a, you know, just a positional coach yep. or an advisor or a quality control coach when right to calling plays a bit much. And then he said, especially when the offensive line isn't very good. Mm-hmm. So I said, well, he's also the offensive line coach. And Tucker said, no, it's too much. So, you know, not to dogpile on Patricia. And this, this is probably more of a bill critique than a Patricia critique. Patricia's just in the or critique. Patricia's just in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. No, 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 duh. The offensive line looks bad. The guy coaching him's in well over his head. So, right. and then on top, but, but there's more to it than just that. I mean, they don't have, they don't ever, one of the tackle spots, whichever way they want to do it, because they move guys around, they don't have between Isaiah Wynn, Connor McDermott, Yadni Kajust, they don't have a starting tackle on one side. Trent Brown was fine to start the season ever since he got this illness, ever since the bye. It, it's been bad. It's it's really been ugly. He doesn't look like he belongs out there. He's got to figure it out. Like I'm a big fan of his. I think he's tremendously talented. I don't think he's cooked, but he looks cooked. He looks like a yeah. guy who should retire. So it's not going to get better. I, we talked about this before. It's just not going to get it better this year, and they can adjust it You know, in the offseason. I'm working on for 98.5thesportshub.com, 10 players to watch in the college football playoff. Three of them are tackles, and mm-hmm. they're going to need to – go that road but in the meantime it's quick throws yards after the catch screens things like that that just are gonna hide as much as you can yeah you know rpos with the offensive lines doing but i think it you, you can that's the hardest position especially tackle specifically mm-hmm. that's the hardest position to hide a deficiency at in this league i actually think it's harder to hide a deficiency at tackle than it is to hide a deficiency at quarterback Look what's going on so, with the Niners right now, right? The way offenses are called in this, you know, in this day and age and the way it runs, it's it's you might be right there. Yeah. You know, because if you can block it, if you can get it's it right. blocked and you can get even if you don't have a great quarterback, if you can get him time and you can make it paint by number, you might not have the most exotic offense. You're not going to break any scoring records, but this is what the Niners offense is predicated on, right? right. Is back we're just going to make it just simple. Just keep going back to Jimmy. <laughs> no, no, but even like right no, now with Brock Purdy, how they're winning games, yep. right? In Right. Um, you know, you you see the Dolphins are another example. Everybody points to acquiring Tyree Kill as the reason for the turnaround. He's a big part of it. You know, else a big part of it? They got Teron Armstead back. That's been a yeah. he, his presence has been a massive game changer for them. So you got to have a tackle. They don't have a tackle right now. They're not going to have a tackle for the rest of the season. It's just not going to happen. We'll deal right. with that in the off season. But that doesn't mean that they can just throw their hands up and say, well. This is a good season, guys. Let's pack it in. Like they got to figure out ways to make it work as it exists right now, and hopefully you, they add a tackle in the off season. Move on from there. But yeah, the off season, the offensive line was not good, and it continues to be a problem. 